So hello everyone and um, welcome to this conversation today. My name is Allison Kuo. I'm the arts residency manager at the International Studio and Curatorial Program in Brooklyn, New York. And today I am going to be in conversation with some of our um, Austrian artists. I'll be in conversation with Anna Witt, who is a current resident here at ISCP and uh, recent alumni, a collaborative duo, Florian Ashka and Larissa Kopp, who are back at home. And um, before I get started, I'll just tell you a little bit about what um, ISCP does. ISCP supports the creative development of artists and curators and promotes exchange through residencies and public programs. Housed in a former factory in Brooklyn with 35 studios and two galleries, ISCP is New York's most comprehensive international visual arts residency program founded in 1994. ISCP organizes exhibitions, events, and offsites projects, which are free and open to all, sustaining a vibrant community of contemporary art practitioners and diverse audiences. Over 1,700 artists and curators from more than 85 countries including the United States, have undertaken residencies at ISCP. Um, so now I'm going to pass it to Anna Witt to introduce herself. Um, hello. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, I'm Anna Witt, and I'm very happy to be here at ISCP. I was looking forward to that for a long time, and I'm really glad that I could make it um, to be here um, to tell about my artistic practice. Um, I am working with performance uh, formats with video and installation, and um, I'm interested in um, forms of uh, extended collaborations, and um, particularly uh, in, in the notion of solidarity. So often um, physical experiences or the body as a form of communication play an important role. Um, um, and my works in um, many ways um, focus on the idea of labor, um, not only as something um, um, productive, but also as a social structure in late capitalism. And I'm highly interested in um, deconstruct, uh, deconstructing ideas of um, class and hierarchies uh, within this field. Um, um, I um, would say in general, I'm interested in forms of um, so uh, subjectivity and uh, solidarity and the idea of commons in my practice. Um, I will um, share my screen and show you a, a, a short um, excerpt of works that are kind of representing my practice and tell you a little bit about what I'm interested in here in New York. So I will try to be short. So, um, project that represents this idea of solidarity and labor um, quite well, I guess, is a Beat Buddy. Um, it's a project um, about, um, 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 it's a performative monument for um, sex workers in um, Berlin in Kurfürstenstraße, where um, pole dancers um, created a um, kind of um, solidarity um, performance uh, to the um, heartbeat of the sex workers that I recorded on the street. So it's a project that deals with this um, formality of monuments, but in a more like extended way using performance. And as I said, um, the notion of solidarity where the pole dancers create a, a dance um, to uh, as a form of homage towards the sex workers on the street and thereby highlighting the idea of um, or deconstructing this idea of hierarchy that was also kind of uh, often uh, related to um, to work and status of um, of work um, and and uh, what also is to mention that the sex the sex workers at the this kind of um, street prostitution happens directly in front of um, the gallery scene in Berlin so this kind of different um, worlds of labor are very close also 
um, and physically to each other. Um, uh, another project um, that I did about uh, aspects of labor is uh, Unboxing the Future. It's um, kind of, um, 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 uh, it um, creates a discussion on the idea of the future of labor and automatization and uh, in Toyota City, a, a, a place that is um, of course highly related to industrial labor such as car production. And I was interested in, in the aspect of the point of view from um, uh, uh, line workers um, about what are, are their experiences of, um, of labor and, and um, where in a, in, a, in a working environment uh, where over 50% are already robots and what are the visions or uh, for a future where, uh, or also like a dystopian or utopian um, um, visions of future without labor in a way. So um, I just show you a short So uh, what you saw in the video is our um, movements from uh, line workers that they were kind of extracting from their daily working routine and transforming it into this kind of um, cultural performances playing with this idea of um, 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 of, a, of movement and the history of movement um, that uh, is also kind of ambivalent on the one hand, um, it's uh, like part of the, this kind of um, uh, culture uh, or it could be um, a part of culture. At the other, other hand, these movements could be easily um, captured and re re replaced by automatization. So um, why I wanted um, to show this work, it's because it's also kind of related to what I'm interested in now when thinking about the aspect of um, the future of labor um, when thinking that probably um, many of the repetitive works will be replaced by robots. Uh, um, another scenario that is um, even more likely is not that the, the workers um, are replaced uh, because in many cases, um, uh, human labor or if even human intelligence labor is just cheaper than robots. So it's the structure behind that will be replaced by um, intelligent machines. So that's um, that's a part where um, I think um, by being in New York, um, I was quite uh, intrigued by the um, this kind of um, um, Gig work, gig labor that um, that is very visible on the streets, where you find all these kind of services uh, like uh, Uber or all these delivery services um, are are a part a big part of the of this public space. So I got uh, really interested in 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 gig work or also the this, this um, these new forms of um, how work labor is um, organized. And I'm particularly interested in this um, de development now in a, in a moment where um, there is this kind of two different tendencies uh, very visible. At the one hand, you have um, um, yeah, a more and more um, like um, 
like particular in this moment of time, like this um, um, workers who are um, quitting their jobs um, as something that's called um, the great resignation. So it's a, a kind of a trend um, and, and also um, a high number in, in, in the US, but also I think uh, globally of, of workers who are going on strike. Um, so they're kind of, um, um yeah doing this um tra uh, like traditional form of um using this form of um solidarity in a way to um yeah to 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 shift or there is this kind of shift in the this um um acceptance towards uh, working conditions um but on the other hand, you have this gig workers or this um very um this kind of very fragmented way of um of working through di digital platforms, um, also in in the in the form of um, and this, um, creative um, content pro producers that are um, that where where labor is organized digitally, and um, so um, my I, my question is like how could something like um, solid the power of solidarity and um, and uh, co connection be uh, transformed into um, into such a fragmented uh, world of labor as a uh, gig um, economy. And I'm uh, still in the process of uh, um, development, so it, I don't have the visual um, out, outcome yet, but I'm planning to do um, collective um, performances uh, with uh, gig workers and um, uh, content producers from, uh, from plat work labor platforms um, and um, trying to create um, something as um, collectivity in this um, format. So I can just uh, show you something from um, uh, out of a research that I did like on, on Fiber. That's a content uh, creator uh, platform. Yeah, so um, this is not a finished work. I see it more as a, a research. Um, it's a, um, it's um, yeah. It shows also my ambivalence. Um, at the one hand, hand I, will, I, I it's this kind of fascination for um, this kind of it's seemingly endless uh, creativity of uh, extended services that you can find through this um, uh, platforms. Um, but on the other hand, it's also um, showing a horrifying um, 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 trend towards a commercialization of basically everything on a very emotional and um, personal level. So it's um, yeah, I just use uh, here a form of um, kind of um, using as a, as a text collage or even as a poem about um, this research. Um, yeah. So I think I will stop because it should be short, right? I hope it was not too long. That was great. Thank you, Anna. All right, so Florian and Larissa, um, take it away. Yeah, so yeah, welcome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for uh, having yeah. us. Um, we are um, Larissa and Florian. Um, we are an artist too working together since 14 um, years already. And collaborative processes are like one core thing in our works as well. Um, we do not just work together in, as a duo, mm -hmm. as we are here now, but- Where we also work in other groups of 
artists and also um, people from other um, with other specifications. Um, and we uh, work a lot um, on the border of art, politics, um, and also questioning uh, collective memory. So we work a lot with pictures that are seemingly um, well known, but then there is always a break or you can, uh, you can see um, when you take a closer look, you can find out a lot of disturbances that lead to political uh, aspects. And yeah, we are working mostly with stage photography, but also performance and actions in public space. And we see like these collective processes or like working in collectives, as well as a kind of counteraction to this kind of neoliberal idea of the human, like just being on yourself, like self-optimizing yourself to death and, and being always alone. Um, so, and as well, um, you can say, um, counteracting the artist genius idea, which is always very much connected with the male genius, of course. Um, yeah, and a lot of our works um, circle around as well queer ideas. Um, we can show maybe um, one of our bigger photo, um, and uh, what we find interesting is that the word queer can in this case also be seen as queering or um, questioning um, ways of working as an artist or uh, um, queering mechanisms of seeing and perceiving or queering spaces. So um, many times we uh, we are doing performances in spaces that are connected with, for example, this is connected with the, the um, history and also with power, power structures. So querying power structures is also a form of protest or rebellion. Yeah, and you can see like um, the title is Queer Revolutionaries with a question mark. So, yeah, that's so this is a, a series we did. Um, called Queer Revolutionaries with a question mark. It is um, like raising the question, how would a queer revolution look like? And since queer is always in a very fluid and fluctuous state and not really something about a concrete thing, how could a queer revolution look like? And how should it end up since it is about dismantling structures, how would the structures in the future then after the revolution look like? So, um, and therefore we went to places of, um, of power, so to say. Mm -hmm. Also ancient power structures. So this is in the imperial castle in Vienna. It's a very interesting space as it is uh, not that old, it's from the 20s, but it's, um, it's uh, built in a historicistic style, but still as you, uh, you can feel that it's like a, a theater stage. It's very shallow and very weird. And um, also when you look at our picture, you can see many ambiguities. So um, there is protest, but the signs are empty. And um, also um, some people, like the, the postures, they remind of classical paintings like uh, De La Croix, French Revolution. And on the same time, you cannot uh, sometimes the positions are not showing like security or they are also ambiguous and also in the, when you take a closer look you can see that they are wearing masks they are hiding their faces and um, trying to uh, fit to a certain image so um, yeah there are many little details in this picture and as well it should um, with that thing uh, in mind, like it should show a little bit as well the the troubles queer people, especially I would say, have, um, but people in general um, have how to like counteract neoliberal capitalist structures, for example, or hierarchies. Like, how would you dismantle them since they're so 
carved into our society, it's leading to a point where you are, you cannot really counteract or fight everything about that you have, for example, in the, that, that process, you have to use the structures to a certain extent to get to a revolutionary process. Huh? And this should like be shown by these um, one hand empty, empty signs. So this, this kind of like questioning the way and as well to these um, objects which are um, used out of, uh, of, out of a cosmetic uh, uh, context, which are actually about self optimizing. Yeah. Maybe we can show some of the single pictures where yeah. you can see those as well. So, there's, um, for example, there is one mask here that is uh, used uh, to, um, to massage the wrinkles out of your face. It's kind of used as a nose glimmers or other weird structures that you can, uh, that are can be seen in the context of self self-optimization and um, this stands for a society that uh, urges you to work on yourself and not blame society but blame yourself when uh, difficulties in your life appear and like the <clears throat> like the end of our revolution our imaginary revolution is set in the art historic museum forming again hierarchy structure so it leads back a kind of bittersweet moment in a way um with the revolutionaries um having made their revolution but maybe not really fully um achieved their aims and um, um building new structures and hierarchies yeah and um uh, interesting here is also that you have the comparison with the other artworks from the 16th and 17th century. So other topics come into that picture like body norms, beauty ideals, and they're uh, changing throughout time because when you look at history, you can see how much society changed. Um, and um, this is a, a layer that like we, we um, always try to have many layers. Uh, which you can unfold by looking and thinking of, about the artwork. Making it as well like easier for for um, audience for the audience to kind of get into contact with it and like to deal with it. Since it has so many layers, there is usually always some uh, access point for everyone um, in the work. And, leads to like more discussions and and the deeper um or further dealing with the with the you know. <laughs> and um yeah let's show as well um work we did um in new york during our residency oh, sorry our residency um it's called private property and it's, it's still in progress so we, we started it in new york city but we will continue um in vienna and probably also in other cities and um it was kind of like obvious for us to do a work about private property in in the us and especially in new york since private property seems to have an even more uh value in the US than, than in Europe, in a sense, like, this is like the most important thing in society, it seems like to us at least. So we questioned that and um, we saw, or Larissa, um, saw um, flags and costumes. Yeah, you can um, see one of them here. Reminding uh, on flags of social democratic movements from the 19th century and their party flags and the costumes as well reminding you of the French Revolution, the Freudian hats of uh, the personifications of Lady Liberty, of Liberty um, wearing that or like the French Marianne. And then we asked people from the queer community in New York um, to pick out public places, 
um, of their daily life or which they can remember, which are in private uh, hands, but not really like serving the community or like the whole society. And I'm posing in front of them with slogans like socialize or um, collectivize and imagining um, who or which, uh, what else should be done with that place and how to deal with it as soon as it is collectivized. Like, for example, transform this uh, private helicopter platform. Yeah, that's, that's the heliport. Uh, in by a VIP um, heliport. Um, transforming it into a public park, for example, yeah, uh, which would make much more use to society than a VIP Yeah, and um, we plan to to show it together with the flags, um, uh, who are also very like which these flags are very detailed, and you can uh, see as, uh, animals uh, that symbolize different ways of societies, like the naked mole rats here. Uh, who live in a kind of beehive or have a different social structure. And these are bonobo monkeys um, who have also interesting structures solving problems with sexual context or using uh, sexual context as a solution of other problems in the society. So, um, yeah, we, we thought of a coat of armor and of a new movement a fictional movement uh, that we set pictures for it. And so we, uh, if there is a picture of something, it's automatically there. So by creating those pictures, we set something into space and we start something. And um, uh, we think that um, it can be at the beginning of something. Mm -hmm. As it was in history many times when pictures were used to create uh, a story or an image about the revolution As a tool or about of propaganda, uh, yes, basically, yes, yes. and like sparking the idea in the people as well who participated of collectivizing private property, basically. And we gave them as well a questionnaire, the the participants, um, asking them like why they choose this place, how they are seeing the value of private property or not and how to, to deal with that, that climate of private property in the US and how to counteract that. So maybe it's sparking some of them to question um, these ideas. Yeah, yeah. Let, let us see where it will lead. I yeah. think this, this is a great point, a jumping off point for mm -hmm. the conversation with Anna. Um, so, what you just said about um, creating images to kind of create the potential for change and, and new realities, I think that resonates with Anna's work as well. Yeah, um, many parallels. <laughs> so <hard>. I, th <laughs> I think all of you, you know, in the tradition of art making, um, you are making images as kind of part of the goal, but you're not doing it through means of, you know, painting or, um, sculpture, you're you're doing it often through collaboration and choreography or composition. Um, so yeah, I wonder maybe Anna, could you respond to that idea of like why why do you feel motivated to make these images with other people? Um, at the uh, first place, um, my um, my practice is uh, not only about um, creating my own um, vision around a, um, a complex um, topic that relates um, to something in society, but to, to more trigger questions and, um, and raising it uh, with others or to, get, to create. I'm more interested in the idea of dialogue than uh, that is um, probably like um, the, also something that would be uh, opposite to propaganda uh, for my understanding so it's about reflection and communication in a more um, um, co complex way where the the, the big topics um, such as hierarchy are um, broken down to a personal um, relation so I want um, 
participants, but also the viewer of my work to kind of um, relate to bigger questions and to create it into this kind of, um, to create something like a, a subject, subjective um, understanding about it, how it relates to the own um, living environment, uh, because often it's kind of, I feel this, um, this um, um, kind of uh, processes or structures in society are so atomized that we don't even see how it's related to ourselves. So, and in creating platforms where you could reflect something like an alternative um, reality on a very personal uh, level, it creates this kind of um, subjective um, access to alternative realities and the idea of utopia that is for me very much linked to art production um, and also the freedom of uh, artistic pro pro um, production that uh, is for me very relevant compared to other fields such as uh, politics or social um, work or um, um, other disciplines so that's um, yeah why I decided to be an artist and um, yeah and Larissa and Florian, what, how do you respond to this um, idea of like um, creating utopias through art? Oh yeah, well, that is uh, something that is a big topic of our artworks. Uh, not only the ones that we showed you, I mean, in this utopia that without private property, yeah, that's uh, now a total utopia, but it would, if, uh, yeah, uh, I don't know what I wanted to say. <laughs> But also in other projects like the Sodom Vienna project where we were um, uh, a kind of fictional party and um, demanding um, an utopian queer society after the role model of the red 20s in Vienna. So um, I think for us, um, it's not really so much contradictionary to be on the one hand political and having an educational approach to a certain extent at least I mean Clarissa is for example an art educator by by profession um, and I think like art was always used um, either to to confirm the status quo which is it it was created in or like to question it and um, one hand or the other um, you can deal with with your art I would say it's um, there is never an unpolitical art in my in my opinion uh, since when you claim your art is neutral and doesn't uh, 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 question anything it propagizes um, it yeah, it's, it's, it's rallying basically for the status quo and like cementing it somewhat, no? So um, for me, not necessarily a contradiction. I just wanted also to add um, that um, I, for me personally, Utopia is not something like this kind of um, uh, un, unreachable, uh, ideal um, 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 state, but it's more like, um, um, something that um, shows the um, possibility of uh, alternative uh, realities or um, um, alter alternative ways of approaching reality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Totally agree. Yeah. So and um, I would say, like, even in like nowadays politics, these kind of utopias are lacking. Like, no one, and I think somewhat maybe art can like step in in that case. Um, to show what utopias could be there and what you can, can aim for, actually, no? So for our audience to know, um, when you all were in residence at ISCP overlapping for part of the time, um, who, who arrived in the U.S. first? Was it? Or were you both starting around the same time? I yeah. think so, no? Like, I yeah. think we pretty much simultaneously came. Maybe one week different or so. Oh, okay, great. And that was in, like, the late summer of 2021. Yeah. Um, 
so yeah the international artist residencies are kind of a, a very specific thing even within the art world but also i think to someone who's who's never done one um and i think starting your residencies during a global pandemic in another country adds another layer of <laughs> just very special circumstances um so i'm just wondering if you could tell everyone a little bit about um what that was like and and maybe what it was like to um share that experience with another artist from your home country um should i start or would you sure go? sure yeah um i mean the um it was of course um uh, a great um opportunity to to get out of um uh, a situation where um which had been very narrow um for a long time to be always in the same kind of um an environment and um, particularly when um i think we um most artists um worked for a long time in a situation where there was um lockdown and enclosement in a way but um artist or the production never stopped because things kind of um always continued so but um and that was creating for at least me um a certain um, pressure to to imagine something else that felt so in, unimpossible because when your your world is getting so small how can, can you even imagine what we talked before about alternative um, realities or alternative approach so the the possibility to to get out and uh, to get to another um, perspective again uh, is very valuable for me and uh, so uh, also um, uh, sharing it with other artists uh, is uh, and having um, different forms of feedback was very um, valuable for me because I think you have it a lot when you're in in art education, but afterwards you just feedback with your own peer group. And in ISCP, you have the possibility to to um, to get conversation with critics that um, possibly are um, yeah have another point of view because uh, uh, being um, like in a, in the professional. Um, uh, like work environment, normally only are, uh, critics or curators approach you, which already uh, are um, are positive towards your work. But in the ISCP, you have the more like um, uh, the possibility to reflect with um, others, which are not already interested in, in what you do and agree with everything you say. So that was um, yeah, were something yeah. very valuable for me. Yeah, I can remember situations where we really discussed about um, with an artist yeah, about her upcoming exhibition and within that discussion, her, the whole idea of her exhibition changed and she was like, I think um, suddenly starting to include huge passages of text in the space and this uh, wouldn't have been possible without that conversation. I think, I think this, this community and the variety of artists that you can find in ICP that can really yeah have a big influence on your work opposed to this one and let's be honest even if you are counteracting that but at home you're always in a sort of a bubble mm. and of course like you're not surrounded constantly by people who are like giving you the hardest critique every second day or what no so um this is a, a unique opportunity to have like fresh view on, on everything, your own verbs, other verbs, and as well becoming more um, open-minded maybe uh, even so. And all the impressions we have in New York, like the museums, the other exhibitions we were going to as a group and everything. This was very valuable, I would say. And um, just thinking about, you know, this, the way that you all create these utopias or like visions for other realities, even within the social fabric of the residency, you know, we have somewhere in the neighborhood of 30 residents were here in person with you all. And um, ISCP has a lot of kind of social programs just for people to spend time together, see exhibitions, um, visit other institutions. And and your, your I think, special skill set amongst the three of you 
was very nice for me to see as as the residency manager because um, it did bring this new dimension to the whole group of people and Anna having your your husband and your child there like that was like I think for um, especially for an American to get to go out on the town and and um, you know go out to openings and then also kind of have this multi generational element to the gathering afterwards. Um, and just sort of being like, oh yeah, you know, there is a, you know, I don't know how old is he, like two years old, but it's like, yeah, <laughs> this this two year old is totally part of the group in a way that like I think it brought a lot of joy to people, but I think it also maybe kind of pushed everybody in the group to think in a more expansive way about who how we can socialize and be together as artists and curators. Yeah, and I think it's also can, um, can, um, raising uh, questions that um, artists in, um, in our generation nowadays are um, trying to find new ways to deal uh, to deal with when in other generations for particularly female artists having like children or family was much more stigmatized. I think there is now a, a way um, for in our generation where we kind of trying to to could establish new models. And I think um, I, I don't have like a, a recipe, but it's all kind of very um, experimental, um, like how to, um, yeah, how, how does um, the artistic production and also this kind of living model that we artists have, like going to residencies, doing um, shows um, in certain cities, uh, mostly not in your, not always in your own hometowns where you would have access to childcare, like how does um, money that you get um, is always kind of structured around one person, but what happens when you go as a family? I mean, and of course, this is um, this is all things that are not clearly figured out. And I think we are having to experiment and um, also claim much more um, practical and functional ways of, um, yeah, how, how to, um, to deal with that. And, uh, in the art um, um, residency, I'm glad there is this generosity and there is a space for for um, for us to to continue for or for me and for for my family to to continue being yeah being an artist um, in the way I I had been before, but also in some exhibition spaces. Then it's often not not as um, in inclusive as it should be nowadays. So. Um, but I like that your approach to that is not, it doesn't, it never felt challenging, like having your family present. It just felt more like, oh, this is, this can be normal. This is great. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, in a way also thinking about um, you know, artistic communities dealing with raising families and queer communities, like the sort of like village of friends that can be a part of a like a family's life, um, you know, especially thinking in the context of somewhere like New York City, where it's so expensive to live here. It's like finding ways to have it, all the help you can get seems very enriching for everybody. Um, I did want to one thing that I thought would be interesting to talk about is um, what it's like for you all to produce these um, very you know, socially engaged, publicly engaged uh, works with collaborators in other countries. You know, your ISCP in New York City is not the only place that you all have done residencies outside of Austria. Um, but yeah, what do, what kind of um, maybe problems come up for you? Um, what kind of things maybe are actually, you know, in some ways more exciting to pursue outside of your kind of home context um yeah yeah so um yeah what i wanted to say when you work in collectives you get um like uh the more time you work in in more different places um you learn a lot about conflicts which is very interesting for me and how to deal with conflicts and you you get more i think social skills that's at one point yeah. and you learn to navigate like 
these cultural differences which are there, of course, and how to like avoid unnecessary conflict. Of course, there are necessary conflicts sometimes, but like avoid the, the misunderstandings and so on. I think that's a, a good school for that, I would say, this sort of um, great event. And all its collaborate, collaborative projects in general, I would say, yeah. What about um, just sort of, I know because for your project, um, because it was very kind of much about, you know, so using the word socialize um, and you're kind of approaching like all of these complex um, political situations in New York. Um, how was that for you kind of getting started with like, what was the bridge for you with your collaborators here? Um, I think it was the conversation, I mean, of course, like we, we had an idea um, about the political situation in New York, a very well one, of course, because uh, information about the US are very accessible for us. So, um, but like the conversations we had at the very beginning with people, since we are both very political, of course, the conversations became automatically political in a sort of way. Um, we almost always came to the point where it's about property and renting space and having a decent surrounding for yourself to exist as a human being, basically. And um, so we instantly came actually uh, uh, after a week or two to that idea that we need to do something about that, actually. Yeah. So it's really about listening first like very in depth to the people mm -hmm. that you're working with and then formulating an idea around what they and of respond course, doing with your own research as well like i don't know reading articles and so on and so forth but as well like the, the interaction with the people of course yes. but it also happened to us like you and i told us in, an, in another conversation that sometimes you're just so overwhelmed by the situation mm -hmm. or you feel so like in search of your own position in that, that you are not really able to do a new work immediately or, that, or to know in which direction it should go and you really need some time to adjust to the situation and to see like where can I find my position as an artist here that uh, happened to us. Or yeah. find your language, like yeah. how should you express I mean, you have a sort of idea, but you don't know yet how to express it really, like the concerns and all the things you, you sucked in, like a sponge, like the conversations and so on. Yeah, but in this case, it, it came more naturally, I would say. Yeah. Also, you, as, as like the information about the US is so accessible and then, yeah. Do you think that as being in a position sort of as outsiders, where you come from a place with um, for, you know, different social programs around healthcare, um, for example, do you think that could make you even more of like, a, like a good listener an empathetic listener because it's not something that you have as much personal experience with? I'm not necessarily sure if that, now yeah, of course, yes. I mean, I would say we are in general very empathetic, but as well like empathetic causes in Austria, there is as well a lot of problems going on, surely. Um, I think it's more like solidarity with like humans in general, yeah. <laughs> um, who are in need of uh, 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 a decent living condition basically, I would say. Yeah, and yeah. when you come to another country for a longer time and you, you want to know what's going on there and immediately you start talking about how is it, how is this field, how is this field in your country and, and then it automatically gets to the point where you, I mean, if you're open-minded and interested in the country you are now, then automatically you start, what are the problems, what is the politics, you know, when you I mean, have an open I, I, conversation. I, I don't uh, want to sound weird, but I feel as an artist who has like more access to public and audiences, 
I feel as well a little bit of a responsibility to do then something which makes at least a little sense and could maybe change something a little bit at least and not just be quiet about it. And of course, like when you change places, you, you care about the places you are right now in more than some distant places. Mm. Yeah. For me, I think it's, um, it's always important uh, in this position um, to be careful about um, not um, trying to um, implement too much your own uh, prefabricated um, ideas that is often a practice that is um, required because um, residencies or this even sometimes uh, exhibitions it's it's uh, based on the idea of proposal so you're somewhere else and then then you're developing a, a concept um, that from far away so how do you um, kind of balance uh, between um, yeah your assumption or pre-given idea um, about something uh, and, and then the, the real experience about a space. So I think um, working in collaborative terms and also on political or and sensitive issues, um, it's always a, a fine line that you have to balance. Um, so um, you're kind of by taking on this res responsibility and, and then um, when being confronted with the mostly it's also the the own um, expectation to be productive to have an, an immediate output and always have something like a new project and that or the, that's already like uh, on the like finished um, uh, that's something that should be um, yeah reduced in, in in this format of residence and and I, I would like to see it more as a as also a space of um, uh, um, ex having like space for uh, like experimental um, moments and um, and um, also to um, I like from my own experience um, yeah this critical moment of trying not to get into into this uh, gaps of reproducing cultural cliches um, it takes time and um, sometimes it needs also more time to investigate, but it's, uh, I see the residence as something like a gate opener that can then um, also reflect on, on these experiences. And also sometimes it, it reflects the practice um, um, that you have, that you, and, you, and the topics that you have um, from, from your own um, uh, experience of uh, taking the other position. So I think, uh, yeah. I, for example, I was also in the position I came here with a, already uh, like I, with an idea about um, a sensitive topic that I wanted to address. And do, while doing the, the research, uh, I felt like, no, it's, it's not possible. I just don't feel in the position. So I, I, I withdraw the concept and starting something different because, yeah, I feel there is this, um, and especially nowadays, there is this also this um, bigger sensitivity about when are you in a position that you feel comfortable as, about speaking about something? Yeah, and, it, and in order to maybe speak with or on behalf of a community mm -hmm. that you're not a part of, mm -hmm. you know, how much time is required to, to spend with them before you can kind of embark on the making process with them. Um, so I want, I think that's a really good kind of thing message for residencies and you know arts funders that this idea that like I know at, at ISCP our feeling is very much um, you know when people apply and they have a proposal the the thing that we gain most from the proposal is understanding your interests and intentions and and maybe what we'd be in a position to facilitate but it's never to expect any kind of outcome and I think it's so important to just lay that out at the beginning and say i love your idea but if you completely change your mind and do something else that you know you need to have the freedom as artists to do what you need to do um and i guess you know maybe as maybe my last question and you know and then also but feel free to ask each other something or maybe talk a little bit about something that we haven't discussed yet. But I'm just curious um, about for all of you, when do you get a sense of knowing when one of these long term projects will be finished? Um, because in some ways, 
you embark upon these relationships and ideas that could go on and on you know forever but there is like a need that you have as artists to um, start new things to explore other things that you're interested in or you know engage in other opportunities and shows that you need to for your work so how do you how do you know within yourselves when it's time to kind of wrap something up it's mm. difficult to say and i'm yeah. not really project, huh? sure if we draw lines or like between mm -hmm. the project so harshly because like some of our let's say props from from performances appear in other performances again or if they are like altered and so on so all it's kind of in a flowing fluid, fluid state and like yeah. transforming into the other project again yeah or the uh, idea that we had for another project to take it and use it a few years ago we use it for another project now or um or that, we redo it sometimes even yeah or we, we, we thought it would be an end but one year later a person suggests uh, and I think, <laughs> a new version of it yeah and i think it's a bit like what Anna said, like, um, getting away from that neoliberal idea of um, always be productive, always having something ready, and as well, like, allow failure, allow transformation, allow um, states of the artwork, which are not really clear. Is it finished? Is it not finished? I mean, who cares? Um, except you're working within a context of making it um, something sellable, no? and yeah of course you always have like the necessity to like earn the money for like the living and so on but maybe in your limits you can try that at least a little bit no and be a kind of a riddle as well for the people like in your work or as a person maybe from my experience it's um uh, as working in collaborative project um projects it's also it's quite important sometimes to have something to be finished because it's like uh, also you're kind of um, um, dealing with um, people who are engaging in something and there's an ex expectation also like not not only from um, like from the viewer of the finished show but also from the from the people who are participating so um, I think for me the the framing in the first hand is very, um, very important. Like, what is the role, and what's what, what are we doing? Like, um, so this kind of creating a stage with a certain frame. And so, for, I have the experience from projects that would be finished just within within a day because it's just very limited, uh, like um, all already pre limited um, kind of conditions um, until this other projects that. Um, that are um, that are started, and then even if you, if um, me as an artist are I'm not part of it anymore, it still continues in a way to grow and has like a own afterlife. So um, I think it's always yeah a definition, a question of definition. Yeah, in, in a way, it's important to give it shape, mostly for your the collaborators and the people who are con contributing to your work. Yeah, so, and, and it can be that there is an exhibition, then you have a certain point where it has to be a shape and then it stops. But in our case, it can be that our, and after a certain time, we take it up again and change it. So there are stops in between, but you can never be sure that it's the end <laughs> in our case. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all so much. I've, I've been really enjoying hearing from you and just wondering if you have any final thoughts. Thank you for, for having us and thank you as well for the opportunity like in the residency program. I think it was yeah. like a unique thing. Very, really. Yeah, and uh, we are so pleased that we are so happy that we met you all. Yeah. Yeah. Me yeah. Too. <laughs> Same here. It's been a privilege to um, get to know all of you and much like the way that you think about your projects like there's always the possibility that this residency relationship will you know continue on uh, both you know as being a part of the iscp alumni network but people sometimes return here um which i think is really wonderful to kind of build 
on um, your work and on being a part of this community. Um, great, so yeah, thank you um, to the audience for joining us for this conversation. I encourage you to follow these artists and keep up with their projects in the future and come visit ISCP. We have open studios um, twice a year and we love meeting um, people from the public who enjoy this type of art.